Hello and welcome back to another information literacy video. Today we are going to talk about the problem solving process and higher order thinking skills. The problem solving process as outlined in your text has six steps and they're fairly straightforward and I think you can see quite easily how they would apply to both simple and complex problems. What I really want to uh, hit on here is that do not forget the last step and it's the most common uh, thing that happens in reality. We go through this, we define our problem, we understand truly what it is we're trying to solve, what's caused it, we look at several different alternatives using our critical and creative thinking skills, we evaluate the best one and implement. And what happens is we say, thank goodness that's over with, I can move on to the next thing. But this process is cyclical. Uh, we need to evaluate the results and then decide, A, did we cause any new problems? And that's a problem in and of itself. Not evaluating results, you will not immediately uh, understand the true impact of the process you just went through, of the solution you implemented. You could have solved one problem but created three more. Is that really a solution? And so don't forget to evaluate your results to determine if you need to start the process over again uh, due to what you implemented. We've covered three uh, types of thinking skills. Critical thinking, creative thinking, and the problem solving process. When we use these skills, I want you to uh, think to yourself, do you use them the same way all the time? The answer is no, we don't always think the same way. Uh, if you're a fan of uh, Harry Potter, I'll ask you three questions here. So what is the correct spell to levitate an object like this? this mug. If you wanted to levitate this mug, what spell would you use? So that's a question. You, you might know the answer. A second question, what would result from me using the spell Wingardium Leviosa on this mug? Still hinting at the same thing, but asked differently and I'm using a different part of my brain. And a third question, how would you recommend I levitate this mug besides dropping it? The different ways to classify the types of thinking that we do, higher order thinking, uh, we use a famous taxonomy called Bloom's Taxonomy. Your text covers this and this is the original taxonomy that Bloom came up with. I want to introduce to you the revised version of this. In the 90s it was revised. Uh, you know, the version that your book uses uses nouns to represent six layers of thinking, starting at the bottom, which is considered the most basic of these levels, and then moving up to the top where evaluation requires the most strenuous, it's the most difficult, the most advanced level of higher order thinking. The revised version looks like this. So they're very similar, but instead of using nouns, we now use verbs because it turns out that thinking is an active process. Who would have thunk? And the top two tiers uh, have switched. So now evaluating is the second tier and synthesis uh, becomes creating something new. And so if you think about those three questions I asked, what's the correct spell to levitate an object? Well, I need to remember what spell that was. We learned that in first year magic class. What would result from using the spell Wingardium Leviosa on this mug? Well, now I need to remember what that spell does. I need to comprehend what's going on there. And now I'm applying it to a specific object or a situation. And then how would you recommend I levitate this mug? I analyze and evaluate my different spells that I have in my repertoire 
and pick the best one. So different levels of thinking for different tasks. The revised tech, uh, taxonomy, I've got some basic definitions here. So when we think about the previous videos you've watched in this series, remembering, recalling any kind of data information, knowledge, or wisdom. Lowest tier up next, being able to explain concepts. So we can use critical thinking skills even at the low level. We don't have to be at the top tier to use our critical thinking skills or the problem solving process. It just depends on what task we're being asked to accomplish. Applying, using any DIKW in another fashion, applying it to another scenario, analyzing same definition as in critical thinking. We want to look at something, uh, break it into parts and relationships and see how they relate to each other. Evaluate, uh, again, same as critical thinking. We want to examine based upon specific criteria that either we define or are defined for us. And then finally creating, generate something new, uh, invent something. Uh, it can be thought of as synthesizing, taking parts to form a new concept or a new whole. So I've got three different um, objectives that are part of this course, part of this series of lessons. And I want you to take a second and look at the three of them and see if you can figure out which level of the revised taxonomy you would use for each. So the first one, define the six steps in the problem solving process. We simply need to remember what the six steps are. Number two, outline the problem solving process given a specific scenario. Now we're moving up a little bit. We've got something that we remember the six steps, we remember the process, we understand what it's supposed to do. Now let's apply it to this scenario. And finally, construct a solution to a complex problem using the problem solving process. So that's reality. Your boss comes to you and says, fix this. We need to create a solution. And that's higher order thinking skills.